Welcome to the story of liberty. This is John Bona. Emmanuel, God with us. You know, on a starry night some 2,000 years ago, a baby boy took his first breath and breaking into the stillness of that night was the sound of a newborn cry. Christmas is a message of joy because not only is the future guaranteed, but the burden of darkness and the shadow of guilt is lifted off the heart. So the good news today is because you are loved by God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You know, even the Christmas tree itself is a symbol of Christ. Christ was always calling people to God, saying, In my Father's house there are many mansions. I will take you there to be with me. And he was pointing to heaven. Like Christ, the evergreen tree always points to the sky. You know, most other trees spread their branches in every direction. And the weeping willow, that even points to the ground. But Christ is the light of the world. And so it is that the lights on a Christmas tree that attract our attention. He is the light of the world and was lifted up upon a tree and continues to draw people to himself. As we place gifts around the tree, we remember the wise men who came and brought gifts to Christ. He is the reason for the season. Even from a secular material point of view, advertisements and commercials, they constantly remind us as the month of December approaches. There are only so many days left until Christmas, and the count begins. What would the world be like without Christmas, without Christmas trees, without presents and cards and greetings? And all that is associated with the welcome of Christmas. Did you know that the very first promise of God that he gave on the gospel about the virgin birth, it's found right in Genesis 3.15. And God said, speaking to the serpent, he said, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. It shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. This is the Protovangelium, the first gospel the very first promise that God would send a redeemer, the seed of a woman who would bruise the head and destroy the serpent that brought the curse upon the planet. But in doing so, he would endure a mortal wound on that cross at Calvary. Next, we see in Isaiah 7, 14, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. One of the most remarkable things in all the world is the huge number of Old Testament prophecies that describe a person on into the future who would be the Messiah, the Messiah of the Jews and of the entire planet. There is nothing like it in any other writing religious or secular, that even faintly resembles this. Think of it. Just imagine the difficulty of prophesizing anything like the prophecies of the Bible. To predict things that are going to happen in the future, centuries and with accuracy and specificity, that exist in the Old Testament prophecies. In other words, you would have to guess, say, in the year Oh, 2725, who would be the president of the United States? Where this person would be born? And the various occupations of that person? And that that person would be accused of treason and executed in a manner that was not even invented for several hundred years from now? 700 years before Christ was born, Micah the prophet said, But you, Bethlehem, Though you be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from the old, from everlasting. So out of Bethlehem, before it could be even found on a road map, 
We were told exactly which town it would be. Amazing, to say the least. And out of this town there would come forth one who was live from everlasting. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the eternal second person of the Trinity, was to come forth out of this little town. Friends, that prophecy in itself is enough to prove the divine authority of the Holy Bible. And this is just but one of several hundred prophecies that have been fulfilled. Christmas. It's a wonderful time of year and we celebrate the birth of the most wonderful person that ever lived on the planet. Christ the Lord. We know that the angels declared that there was good news. The angels said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the people. The wonder of it all. The shepherds were filled with wonder. They were astonished beyond measure to see the heavens open and the angels of God descend. The Virgin Mary was filled with wonder too. She said, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? But she was told that the power of the highest, the Holy Spirit, would come upon her. She waited with great wonder to see this child born, not in a granite palace, but in a dirty stable and laid in a manger where the cattle fed. Joseph, he must have been filled with wonder as well. You know, folks, Christianity is unique because Christ is unique. It is a singing and rejoicing religion. Other religions have chants and things like that, but Christianity has churches all over the world that rejoice while they sing. There is the hallelujah chorus only in Christianity. Absolutely nowhere else. Think of the beautiful names that Christ has given in the Bible. He is also called the Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, the Lily of the Valley, the Rose of Sharon, the Light of the World, the Day Spring on High. He is called Emmanuel. He is God with us. And if God be with us, who could be against us? We are talking about the one who is the creator of all things, the one who made the stars and the heavens as scintillating lanterns in the sky, and yes, the creator of each of us. You know, when I was in school, Christmas was celebrated much more than today. When I was in school, I remember attending a wonderful Christmas play in a pageant and hearing the beautiful music, O Come All Ye Faithful, Joyful and Triumphant, O Holy Night, and other beautiful songs. You know, a familiar passage of Scripture answers the question, Who is he? People ask that question all the time. And here it is. The answer is, O Zion, you bring good tidings. Get up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem, you who bring good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. This is what Christmas is about. We are a visited world, the almighty creator of the entire universe, the great God who flung the universe into existence from the tip of his fingers has come to the world, God incarnated. You know, St. Anselm, the Archbishop of Canterbury in the Anglican Church, he wrote a book named Cure Deus Homo, which means, why God man? The question he was answering is, why did God become man? And then he gave the answer, because all people sin. And sin is infinite and required an infinite penalty. So it would take an infinite man, because it was man that had sinned and had to pay the penalty. So Almighty God became flesh and he dwelt among us and he offered himself up as a sacrifice to pay the penalty so we might be spared. That is the perfect justice of God. So my friends, do you know the requirement to live forever at God's address? Yes, it is perfection because there is no sin in heaven. We are not going to walk up there with all our muddy feet and mess it up. See, the perfect life 
of no sin was accomplished only by Christ the Lord. And he did this for us. And that perfect life is imputed to you and me and all who will trust in him by faith. As Charles Wesley said of Christ the Lord in his familiar Christmas carol, he said, Hark, the herald angels sing, that he was born that no man may die, born to give them a second birth. What a wonderful statement that is, a new birth. Christ is the one who says who does and who does not go into heaven. After all, it is his heaven. And if you are not born again, as shown in the book of John 3, 3, you will not be allowed. You've heard the term born once, die twice. Well, that second death means being cast into hell. You've also heard born twice, born the second time spiritually. You will have a second birth, an eternal joy unspeakable in heaven. And that is the good news of Christmas. God bless you and have a Merry Christmas.